if we go back to the four components of the uh, outer uh, shape and if I press the uh, shift button and go around and select all four of them so they're all highlighted with the dotted line I now want to make sure that those are joined together because if there's a, a little tiny bit that's not joined because of my drawing errors etc it will cause problems. So there is an option to join open vectors and you can see I've highlighted it here it's under edit objects it's the bottom left hand of that section I'm going to click on it now and I'm just going to say join. Now you can see that it's worked because when I click on any part now that is highlighted and selected as one entity. Now in order to create the channel where the bristle is going to go I want to produce a copy of this outer shape but slightly smaller. So if I select it and go down to this offset option at the bottom left which says offset selected vectors and it just happens to be set where I want it. I want it to be uh, selected so it's inwards just here and I want a distance of four millimeter. Now select offset and there's that uh, new offset created there and that's four millimeters in from the outside. So I better do a quick save. That's saved. Right so we're now going to generate our first tool path and for simplicity I'm going to choose uh, the larger of the two cutouts and this is for the router. So I've highlighted it I now go to the menu here and a 2D control and it's switched to tool paths tab and now we have this uh, new menu set up here uh, which allows me to choose the various types of toolpath that we're going to use for this operation. Now I'm not going to go into what all of these do but I'm going to select uh, the top left hand one here which is a profile toolpath. Now the first thing you're asked to look at is the cutting depths. Well my starting depth is zero, that's fine, that's the top of the material and I want this cut to be all the way through. So I want it to be, and to be on the safe side, I'm going to say 20 millimeters and that definitely cuts through my material. The next thing to do is to select what cutter I'm going to use. Now I'm going to press the select button and the various tools that one has as far as VCALV Pro are concerned are shown here. Uh, you cannot use one of these if you don't have the tool because you'll end up with a mismatch. So you should look at those tools that you actually have that you can fit to your router and see if they match any of these. Now I have an end mill which is 0.25 of an inch across so I'm going to choose that one for this operation and I'm going to press OK. So that's fine I've now got this quarter inch end mill and you remember what I said about mixing metric and uh, imperial well this is one such example. Now I want to make sure that uh, this hole is not cut out so rapidly that it puts the X carve or the router or the cutter under any form of stress and so I can now go in and edit uh, this particular tool and it's only editing it for this particular job it's not a global edit and I can check uh, all the various detail for this tool. Uh, its, its diameter there is specified in inches so everything else is going to be in inches. Well I'd rather it were in uh, millimeters so I know that a quarter of an inch is 6.35 millimeters. Uh, my pass depth that's each time the cutter goes through how much am I prepared to take off? Well um, if my material was something really hard I would only want to take a shaving off at a time. If it was something really soft like balsa wood then I could take a big chunk out each time. Uh, well I'm going to choose that to be 1.5 millimeters per pass. The spindle speed I can't alter that in the software so it's whatever the motor is set at on the DeWalt. Now my feed rate I'm going to choose millimeters per second because that's something I, 
I know how to work with. And to be on the safe side, I'm going to choose 10 millimeters per second feed rate and the plunge rate I'm going to have as, as 2 millimeters per second. And that's a very conservative set of values for this particular tool. And that having done that, it now tells me the number of times it's going to have to go around to cut that circle. That can be uh, reduced by making each cut deeper. Now, the next group here is the uh, uh, machine vectors, and it says, do I want this on the outside or the inside? Well, uh, the, that line defines the outside of the circle. Therefore, my cutter has to be on the inside. So there we go. I've selected inside. I'm now going to move to this part of the menu here, which defines tabs. Now these are important. If you imagine we're cutting all the way through this material and as we get to the very end uh, we'll end up with a little floating circle of material in the middle and if that were to hit the cutter uh, then all sorts of things could happen. So we want to make sure that that piece of material doesn't actually become loose and you can do that by adding tabs. I'm going to press the tab button and I've now got an option for saying how big the tabs should be and how thick they should be. Now, for these two circles, I'm quite happy that the tabs are going to be six millimeters long. But the thickness, now bearing in mind that we're cutting to 20 millimeters in depth, and our material is 19 millimeters thick, in order to have a meaningful tab, it has to be uh, two millimeters as a minimum. If it's one millimeter, it would actually be marginal whether it's a tab or not. So I've set it at two millimeters. I'm now going to go to the edit tabs. Uh, which allows me to decide where those tabs go. And I could either uh, automatically add them uh, or I can just click where I would like the tabs to be. I'm going to have one there and I'm going to have one here. So I've got one at the top, one at the bottom, uh, and that's fine. And I'm happy with that. So I can close that. Having done the tabs, we'll now move down here. The only thing I'm going to do in this section is to give this a name and I'm going to call this large hole demo. I'm going to say calculate and it comes up with a warning that I'm going to cut all the way through the material and I know that so I'm going to click OK. And here we have now a preview screen and I can preview the selected toolpath. There's the tool going around cutting and cutting and cutting and then finally it's finished and it's left a pair of tabs. And you can see that those tabs are quite thin. If I manipulate this, you can probably just about see that those tabs are indeed quite thin. So I'm happy with that. I can close that. And now it's imperative that I save this toolpath. All I have to do is hit the Save Toolpath tab. It's kept the same name. And you notice that the ending here is G-code. I have my version of VCarve Pro set up that whenever I do a save of a toolpath, it's always going to save it as G-code. And if you want to know about that, uh, if you look at my video I made uh, as part of the setting up the XCarve series, uh, one of them was all about the software, and you'll find out about G-code there. So there we go. I'm going to save that. So I've got my first toolpath created and saved. I can press close. Now, having done the large cutout, the small one is going to be very simple indeed. I'm going to click on it, go to the toolpaths menu, going straight back into the profile toolpath. Now, because I've already used this once, all of the data here should be pretty much the same. Cut depth is 20 millimeters. Uh, I've still got the same settings for my quarter inch cutter. I can check that by going into the edit and that is all exactly as it was. Um, I can also check that I'm going to cut on the inside. I'm happy with that. Uh, I need to select the tabs though uh, because that's not pre-selected and I'm going to put in again two tabs, uh, one at the top and one at the bottom. And now I'm going all the way to the bottom. I'm going to call this small hole demo. And I get it to calculate. And again, it warns me that I'm cutting all the way through. I'm happy with that. I'm going to preview it here. And there it goes. And there are my tabs. And you can see that's exactly as we were expecting. Close that. I'm going to go to save here. 
Uh, and I'm going to go straight in and save it. Small hole demo G code save. So that's done. Because it's again going to use the same cutter, I'm going to select the outer shape now uh, because I want to define the uh, tool path to cut out uh, the shape. And it's going to be the same cutter that we had before. So we go over to here and we're going to use the profile tool path again. It's the same tool. We can check this. Yep, it's the same tool. I'm happy with that. Uh, and this time we want this to be on the outside because that line defines the outside of the object. Therefore, the cutting has to be on the outside of that. And again, I'm going to add tabs. Now, this time I want them to be slightly bigger because it's a bigger piece of wood. I'm saying they're 10 millimeters uh, across and I'm going to uh, choose. Uh, I think I actually want uh, three of them. I'm going to have one here. I'm going to have one here. I'm going to have one here. And that should be pretty, pretty reasonable. So there, there are my tabs set. I've got nothing else I need to do other than name this. And I'm going to call it outside demo. So there's my outside demo, demo tool path. Calculate. Oh, you're going to cut all the way through. I know I am. So I OK that. And if I now press the preview button here, you can see it going around. Going to take quite a few cuts this time because um, it's a lot uh, longer. And again, you can see I've got those three tabs where I want them. So that's fine. We can close that. We can save it uh, and just press on that button. Outside demo, G code. Yep, save. The final part we have to do is to take a look at this channel here. And that channel is the only odd one out because it's not going to be all the way through the material and it's going to use a different cutter. So I'm going across to here. Now it just so happens that my smallest cutter uh, was uh, not the quarter inch. My smallest cutter is 3 16th of an inch. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to now uh, set the start depth to zero. And this time I want the cut depth to be 10 millimeters. And that's how deep it needs to be for where the bristles are going. I've got my uh, cutter, which I've just selected. I'll just go into edit and check it. Uh, it says it's 4.7 millimeters. That's my approximation to the size of my uh, cutter uh, in millimeters. I've got the, uh, the pass depth. Uh, I've got the feed rate and a plunge rate set up. I'm happy with all of that. So I've checked it. It's going to be done in seven passes. Now this time, this line defines the outside of where I want the channel to be. So therefore, this needs to be on the inside. The cutting needs to be done on the inside of that line. I don't need to have any tabs. Uh, so all I need to do is give it a name and I'm going to call it channel demo and I'm going to get it to calculate. And I'll do the preview. There it goes. And you can now see that there indeed is a channel there. So that's it. We've done everything. I've just got to save that last tool path. There it is, channel demo G code save. I can now close that. I can now do a final save. And we've done everything we need to do to create the dust boot. And so there we are, we've produced the tool paths that are used to create the dust boot. And all one now needs to do is to take that and feed it via the universal G-code sender uh, to the X-Carve. Now that's not something I'm covering in this video. I really only wanted to show you how simple it is to use Vectrix V-Carve Pro uh, to do a project like this. Now I'm sure I'll be doing many more projects with V-Carve Pro and, and I'll share them with you. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.